Thank you, Lord God. We worship you. Thank you, Lord God. Praise the name of the Lord God. We bless your holy name. We magnify your name. You're worthy of our glory, honor, power, might, dominion now and forever. King of kings and Lord of lords, our Savior, Messiah, our all in all, the Christ in us, our hope of glory. We worship you. Thank you. The Holy Spirit, have your way. Fill us anew and afresh with you. Thank you that we speak your word with boldness yeah. because yes, of the Holy Lord. Spirit. And signs and wonders follow us in your name. Thank you, Lord God. You. We worship you. We magnify your name. Thank you for each one here, for your blessings, Thank your anointings you, in this place. That each of us are anointed by you because we are your kids. Mm. We are children of God and we walk in the anointing Thank of, you, of our King. And we just give you praise for that anointing. We receive it. We receive all you have for us. We receive you, all you have for us each and every moment of every day. You have so much in store for your children. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we don't count ourselves as unworthy because you've made us worthy because you've died for us. And you've made us the righteousness of God. And we have Christ in us, the hope of God. Thank you, Lord. Uh, and Lord, therefore, we thank you that you've made us worthy to receive all that you died to give us. That we will walk forward in victory and power and anointing. In your word. In your promises. Declaring what you have done for us. Lord, you say that we overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And that our testimony will go forth out of our mouth each and every day. Each and every moment we are living epistles. That we are being watched. And Lord, that we would live in a manner worthy of the high calling of Christ in us. And we praise you for this. Blessings, anointings. We fill, we just receive. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, fill, fill, fill. Jesus' name. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Quote about Hashem, just praying tongues just a little bit. Quote about Hashem, or singing tongues, whatever you want to do. Kia la da kashan la da kia la da kia liya. Kia shandala ya ta kashan la da ki. Kia la da ki ya mahala de. Hallelujah. Ki shandala da kha ya maha. Quote about Hashem, the da da ki. Ki shandala la da kisha. Kia shandala la da kisha. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. No weapon formed against us can prosper. No weapon formed against these families can prosper in the name of Jesus. Any tongue that rises against us in judgment will be condemned. Because this is our heritage. Thank you, Lord God. And our righteousness is of you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. We love you. Holy Spirit, have your way. I thank you that you're just having your way tonight. We just love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Do I need to push the button, or is it already pushed? I pushed it. Oh, thank you. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't want to have a title for this. I picked a very broad topic. It's called the word. <laughs> it's just about the word of God. You know, and um, you know God's word. Well, let's just start with I'm just gonna start with John 1, 1 through 14, the Amplified Bible. Well, I'll read in the King James first and the Amplified. Was it John 1? John 1. That beautiful John 1. You know, because God, oh, he's so good. So good to us. In the beginning was the word. And you know, the passion calls it the um, living expression, which is in some of the translations, that's what the word means because it's the logos and it's the living expression of who the father is. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through Him. Without Him, nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, 
and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. I'm going to go ahead and read it in the um, uh, Amplified now, and then I'll read the rest of it in the Amplified. In the beginning, before all time, was the Word, Christ. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God himself. He was present originally with God. All things were made and came into existence through him, and without him was not even one thing made that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. You know, Jesus is the word, isn't he? I and mean, whenever you read this, it's so exciting because he gave us his word. He is the living word. In him is life. He is the light. And he gave us this. Amen. He, he spoke this through the apostles and prophets and so that we have this, that we can look at it any time and hide in our hearts and be full of his word, which is full of Christ, isn't it? When you're full of his word, you're full of Christ. You've got to remember that, how important and powerful the word of God is. And the light shines on in the darkness, for the darkness has never overpowered it or put it out or absorbed it or appropriated it and is unreceptive to it. That's so powerful, isn't it? Darkness has never overpowered it. Put it out or absorbed it. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came to witness that he might testify of the light that all men might believe in it, adhere to it, trust and rely upon it through him. He was not the light himself, but came that he might bear witness regarding the light. There it was. The true light was then coming into the world, the genuine, perfect, steadfast light that illumines every person. He came into the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him, did not know him. He came to that which belonged to him, to his own, his domain, his creation, the things he created, the world, and they were, who were his own did not receive him and did not welcome him. And it's just so sad mm -hmm. uh, to me. It's just always, it, it's so grievous mm -hmm. that they didn't recognize him and they didn't receive him because they made the Mosaic law their God, really, instead of recognizing the true God when he came, the Messiah they were all waiting for, amen? But as many as did receive him and welcome him, he gave the authority, the power, the privilege, the right to become the children of God. You know, so often we think, I'm a child of God. And, and then we just, it's amazing, isn't it? But we don't take it any further. We don't take it any further. What does it mean? Right there in the Amplified, it says we have the power. He gave us the authority, the power, the privilege, and the right to become the children of God for those who believe in him, trust him, adhere to, rely on his name, who owe their birth neither to bloods nor to the will of the flesh, of uh, physical impulse, nor of the will of man, that of a natural father, but to God. They are born of God. And then the last part, and the word Christ became flesh, human, incarnate, and tabernacled, fixed his tent of flesh, and lived a while among us. And we actually saw his glory, his honor, his majesty, such glory as only begotten son, and only begotten son receives from his father, full of grace, favor, loving kindness, and truth. That's the word of God. Amen. Amen. That's our Jesus, the living word, incarnate. And tabernacled in the flesh, but then now he's tabernacled in us, isn't he? We are, we are the tabernacle of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And then they, he lives in us, and it's so powerful. And you know, the word, Jesus, full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. And you know, so many people, they just they talk about truth, but they don't know the truth. Christians, so many Christians don't know half the truth that's in this word they don't know a third an eighth of the truth that's in this word that the an eighth of the truth that was what jesus died to give them and represented because when you see that he became he was god and he became man and then he died and rose again and, and bore our sins and bore our sicknesses in his body on the tree amen that we might die to sin and live for righteousness and by his wounds we are healed 
if we don't see all that he gave to us, we're not receiving, we're kind of, you know, we're not receiving the truth. And we're not receiving his grace. Because if by grace he chose to die for me, to give me all these good and perfect gifts, and to give me all these promises, and not just promises, but a covenant. Mm -hmm. And in his covenant is healing, provision, it's salvation. It's so great, such a great and awesome. It's eternal life. It's the power of the Spirit in us. He gave us all these things, and we need to receive it. We don't want to be like those Pharisees that said, you, you're not anything like what we thought you would be, and we, we don't receive you. And, you know, it grieves my heart when Christians who believe in Jesus as their Savior, but they don't see or believe or receive him as their healer yeah. or as their protector. They don't, they don't take Psalm 91 to heart. And one of the scriptures, let's see, let's look at, um, let's see, let's look at 1 Thessalonians 2, um, 12 and 13. I'm going to read it uh, in the New King James and then the Amplified because it's not very long. I don't know what I said, 1 Thessalonians 2. two. So, uh, I wrote a few scriptures down yesterday. And then I'm going to read a couple things. But then last night I read Smith Wigglesworth and it was exactly, and it was like, wow, it was really cool because it was a scripture, one of the scriptures. And it was what I'd been studying yesterday. And then I read a little bit of Christ the Healer last night. And again, it was talking about the same thing. I thought, Praise the Lord. So just reinforcement, but that was really powerful. So I'm going to read a little bit of that. Um, first, what did I say? First, first Thessalonians, Thessalonians 2. 2. First Thessalonians first 2. Thessalonians 2. Alright, 12. That you would walk worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. And isn't that powerful? Mm -hmm. We're called into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. We are walking, we talk about this in our word warriors. We are walking, we are in the kingdom of God and we are advancing the kingdom everywhere we go because the kingdom is inside of us. Amen. Everywhere you go, when you open your mouth and you talk the word, when you pray for someone, when you just show your joy and your love for people, you're advancing the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, Amen. isn't it? And when you walk in the righteousness of God, you're advancing the kingdom of God. Amen. Everywhere you go. You know, God doesn't didn't make this difficult. He did so much to make it easy for us. I mean, he, he took it all. He took it all, and all he says is, your job, we were talking about this on Monday, I love that scripture, the work that you do is to believe in the one the Father sent, Amen. to believe in me. That's our work, and yep. it is work, mm -hmm. only because there's a devil that's always trying to lie to us and right. take and snatch right. that belief out of our, and, and say you can't do it, you're not righteous, oh, look at what you did, look how you, and they're all, he's always trying to rob and steal and destroy from you. So your work is to continue believing and resist that all the time. Amen. Because we live in a fallen world. It's full of the curse, right? That's right. We are redeemed from the curse Amen. of the law. Amen. Amen. The blessings of Abraham are, are ours. Oh, Amen. And the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus made us free from the law of sin and death. But we, we need to do that work of believing and keeping in the rest of belief, right? And entering that promised land because we believe. And we're to walk that promised land living now. Right. Now. You know, John always shares the story when he was, we were trying to leave Big Bear. He wanted to move out of the cold. Tabitha. <laughs> <laughs> you just wait till the Lord shows you this. No. <laughs> You're in trouble. <laughs> and he's by the lake talking to the Lord about he doesn't want to be in Big Bear and blah, blah, blah. And the Lord says, this is your promised land. Right. Amen. Amen. Because and I screamed. <laughs> And it is, wherever you go, I mean, God will send you specific places sometimes, but where you are right now is your promise line because you walk in the promises of God. Amen. Amen. This is your promise line. The word of God is your promise line. It goes with you everywhere you go. Yeah. And you know, if you're not having promise line living here, you're not going to necessarily take it. You're not going to take it wherever you go because you take you with you. Mm -hmm. You take your attitudes, you take your complaining, you take your whatever with you if you're not Believing the promises of God, you're not going to be happy. 
because the joy of the Lord is your strength and you need to walk with him to have true happiness and joy. Amen. Amen. So this is our promised land, wherever we are now. And, you know, so often Christians are trying to become what they already are. You know, we already are the righteousness of God. We already are anointed because we're his kids. Amen. We are the anointed ones of God. We already are filled with the spirit of God. We already are saved, healed, delivered, protected, because that's what the word says. And that's part of our covenant. Therefore, it's already been done. Amen. Amen. And it's in our, his last will and, and testament to us here. I did it for you. It is finished. Amen. 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 It's yeah. finished. Yeah. So then instead of trying to it's make finished. it be finished, you say, thank you, Lord. It is finished. And your word says this. Therefore, I believe it and I receive it. And I'm going to do that work of staying in faith. Right? And resisting the enemy and making him flee because I'm staying in faith and I'm believing your promises and I'm entering the promised land. Because we are well able. That's yeah. what the, that's yeah. what God says. He said it to those those um, children of Is Israel. He said that we are well able to take the land because God said this is our promised land. We're well able. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And he said you'll do more than I did. That's right. Yeah, that's right. He's a God of more than enough. Amen. Right. So um, then let's look at this. So let me go on in this scripture. I didn't finish the other part. For this reason, we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it, not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. Amen. Amen? Amen. And the Amplified says in verse 13, um, that's going to be 12 to live lives worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and the glorious blessedness who which true believers into which true believers will enter after Christ's return verse 13 and we also especially thank God continually for this that when you received the message of God which you heard from us you welcomed it not as the word of mere men but as it truly is the word of God which is effectually at work in you who believe exercising i like this part it's superhuman power in those who adhere to and trust in and rely upon that word amen superhuman power is what you have inside of you yep. you have the power of god in you the same power that raised jesus from the dead inside of us do we believe it amen. Yes. Amen. we need to tell ourselves and speak it and speak it over our lives that same power that raised jesus dead body from the grave lives in me everywhere we go we should speak it when we wake up in the morning we go to bed at night we should have the vision of when we lay hands on the sick they recover Hallelujah. because that's what the word amen. says amen Hallelujah. do we believe what the word says do we believe or are we just too embarrassed to try laying hands on the sick because what if they don't recover well, you do your part. God will do his. Amen. Amen. Right, gotta believe. And the Lord, the Holy Spirit will direct you. But regardless, he said we would. And God doesn't lie. Amen. He said this is who we are. You have to say this is who I am, what the word says I am. Amen. Um, exercising its superhuman power in those who adhere to and trust and rely on it. We comforted and encouraged you and challenged you to adopt... <laughs> Okay, that's not um, where I want to go there. All right. That was the first verse. I don't know. I think I have an extra verse here. It's verse 12 again. <laughs> okay. So, you know, I was reading. Um, so last night I was, I was reading Christ the Healer by Bosworth in this one section. You know how some people, there's talk going around in different, circles that you know you have to have a specific revelation of the word to make it apply to you something like that it almost takes the power out of the word of god right i mean the holy spirit teaches us and directs us amen but the word is our standard the word is where we build our faith if we don't know that the word says that we're healed then how can we have faith for healing right. amen how would we know to be saved if we didn't see it in the Word and believe it? So I was reading in Bosworth, and this was so good. So I'm just going to read this small section to you. So tell me if it's, you know, if you need me to stop and go slower or something. It says, 
He's talking about healing, of course. It's called Christ the Healer. Um, he that has seen me has seen the Father. Let's see, let's start here. Jesus, his life was both a revelation and a manifestation of the unchanging love and the will of God. That's really deep. God, Jesus' life was a revelation to the world and a manifestation of the unchanging love and the will of God. That You can stop right there. Mm -hmm. If Jesus went about doing good and healing those that were oppressed by the devil and destroying the works of the enemy, and he was manifesting the will of God, how could you ever say that has changed today? Mm -hmm. Or that is not for you? He healed all who came to him. Yeah. He was showing who the Father was in everything he did. Mm -hmm. And he was listening to what the Father said to do in everything he did. Amen? He literally acted out the will of God for Adam's race. He said, I came down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me, and that the Father that dwells in me, he does the work. It's the Father's will. It's the will of God. Amen? Right. Healing is God's will for all of us. Amen. He also said, he that has seen me has seen the Father. Therefore, when he healed the multitudes who thronged him day after day, we see the Father revealing his will. When he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them, he was doing and revealing the will of God for our bodies. Perhaps no one would be more conservative than the scholars of the Episcopalian Church. And yet, and this book is written a hundred and some years ago, right? And yet... <laughs> The commissions appointed to study the subject of spiritual he healing and report back to the church. After three years of study and research in both the Bible and history, say in their report, the healing of the sick by Jesus was done as a revelation of God's will for man because they discovered that his will is fully revealed. They further went on to say, no longer can the church pray for the sick with the faith-destroying qualifying phrase, if it be thy will. That's an Episcopalian yeah. church writing wow. that. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty powerful, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. They studied for three years and they came up with, well, the truth. <laughs> okay, one more little bit here. Yeah, I could but, have just told them and saved them three years. Yeah. Yeah. We could have told them? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the message everywhere taught in the Gospels is one of complete healing for soul and body for all who come to him. Many today say, I believe in healing, but I do not believe it is for everyone. If it is not, how could we pray the prayer of faith for any, or even for one whom it is God's will to heal until we have a revelation by the Spirit that we are praying for the right one? You can say the same thing for healing. You've heard people say, he didn't die for the whole world, only for the chosen ones, those that he chose. I've heard that. It's a teaching going around because... It's, it's um, predestination, right? Mm -hmm. Some were chosen as vessels of honor and some of dishonor, and they, they build this whole thing on that. So it's the same, how do you have faith for salvation if you don't believe it's God's will for you to be saved? Right. You know? Um, if it is not God's will to heal all, then no man can ascertain the will of God for himself from the Bible. Are we to understand from these teachers that we must close our Bibles and get our revelation direct from the Spirit before we can pray for the sick because the will of God cannot be ascertained from the Scriptures. That just totally nullifies what the, the Scriptures as the anointed, you know, inspired. Word of God, inspired Word of God. If you say, you know, you have to get a specific revelation for each person, if God gave us the will, His will, it's His will. And, you know, that's why people start to change things because they start to, I don't know, prophetic word for themselves or they just, if you're not anchoring everything by the word, you can really get off. Yep. You can really get off. This would be virtually teaching that the whole of the divine activity on the line of healing would have to be governed by the direct revelations of the spirit instead of by the scriptures. How are the sick to be healed if there is no gospel, good news of healing, to proclaim to them as a basis for their faith? Or since faith is expecting God to keep his promise, how can there be faith for healing if there is no promise in the Bible that the sick can apply to themselves? 
Amen. I thought that was so powerful because you have to have, you have to start with the word and with the word, have the word hidden in your heart. And this scripture in um, John 8, um, this is the passion version. Even though you are descendants of Abraham, we talked a bit about this on Monday for those that were there. Even though you are descendants of Abraham, you desire to kill me. Jesus is talking to the Pharisees because the message I bring has not found a home in your hearts. Yet the truths I speak, I've seen and received in my father's presence. But you are doing what you've learned from your father. And of course, that made them very angry because he was saying their father is not Abraham, but it's the devil. And then in verse 42, Jesus said, Then if God were really your father, you would love me, for I've come from his presence. I didn't come here on my own, but God sent me to you. Why don't you understand what I say? You don't understand because your hearts are closed to my message. Um, now, we all know about the Pharisees and how they wouldn't receive Jesus or his truth or his word. But we always have to examine our hearts. I, we have an amazing faith-filled church. Mm. But we can always go deeper and wider, amen? We can, amen. You know, I was thinking about Tabitha last week when she was talking about... Um, some trust in chariots. So we used to sing that song. Do you remember that song? Yes. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. That one. Yeah. That's the one. <laughs> some That's trust the in one. chariots and, and then we know that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will. How's it go? Oh, can't forget it. <laughs> we will rise up and the Lord. We have risen and stand upright. Some trust in chariots. <laughs> I used to lead worship at Christian Center years ago. I was a worship leader, and we sang that song a lot. I loved it. I love all those faith songs. Amen. But when we were meditating on that, I was writing a few things. But I, I wrote a lot down, as she said. <laughs> but, you know, we're, we have to ask ourselves these questions. So it goes along with what you were asking last week. Is our trust truly in the Word? Are we trusting in some chariots and horses in our lives that aren't the word it aren't jesus and so where's my trust place these are questions i think you asked or i wrote down i'm not sure what are the chariots in my life do i fully trust in god and i love it where it says i will i will remember the name of the lord my god so every moment we have to remember his power his victory his strength who we are in christ we have to remember the lord our god that just doesn't just mean I remember you, God. Remember who he is. Remember what he's done for you. Remember who you are in him. Remember you are in Christ. Remember you can overcome anything in this life by his power. Remember the Lord your God. And don't trust in your own. You know, so many people and so many Christians, um, they're trying to work their way still. You know, they, they feel like it's never enough. Enough praying or enough word time or enough witnessing or and you know god only asks you to do what he asks you to do and it's not about our, our work is to believe in the one whom he sent jesus yeah. that's our work yeah. amen yeah. and are you raising your hand or are you i'm in agreement with okay you. good i thought that's what it was but i didn't want to ignore you <laughs> Thanks so much. that's right so that's our work so um Anyway, where was I? I got distracted. <laughs> distracted myself. <laughs> remember. remember. We have to remember him. And remember, as that, that scripture says, my enemies must fall, collapse, be defeated. I will rise up and stand firm in Christ. Amen. Remember. It's kind of like the Santa Claus, that movie, when he throws the little snow, snow globe to his dad and says, remember, dad. Yeah. All of a sudden he remembers. Yeah, that he's Santa Claus. Anyway. <laughs> I see your point. I see my point. <laughs> but you know. Deep. Deep. It's very deep. Right. Very deep. It's I said we're going snowy. deep tonight. <laughs> um, so remind yourself moment by moment to trust in Jesus. Cast your cares on him. Believe. Stand. Stand tall, courageous, firm, without wavering on his word. On who he says you are who he is, amen, and you are in him. 
My enemies are destroyed, collapsed, bowed, fallen, defeated fully by Jesus' victory. Amen. I'm more than a conqueror through him, in him, in Christ, Christ in me, my hope of glory. That's who we are. But you know what? You have to talk to yourself because if you don't talk to yourself and speak these things, all the other stuff will talk to you. Yep. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> You're never getting better. You're going to die. You know, there's all these worried thoughts or fear, whatever. The devil loves to torment and try to, fear brings torment. But we've been delivered from that spirit of Amen. fear Amen. that caused torment all those years. And if you're afraid, you know, we have nothing to fear anymore. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? We don't, we're not, we've been delivered from the fear of death. I've heard so many, we were hearing testimonies, that, like the Copeland thing, of so many people that, you know, and you think of Stephen when he was being stoned and he just, he wasn't in pain at all. He's looking up and seeing Jesus standing and he was by the face of an angel. And that the Lord showed how, you know, um, the loved ones and how they were taken out before the fire broke out or they were taken out before they drowned. They didn't feel it. Jesus took even that for us. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Amen. He took death. For us, all we do is just translate to our new home. You took the sting out of it. The sting, yes. I mean, our bodies still die, but we never die. Right. We never die. <laughs> and it's quicker than a twinkle of an eye. Uh, it's quicker than, and it's, it's in the midst than of you. Their thought. Absolutely, and our life's that quick too. Mm -hmm. They say our, our life's like a vapor. One day we're all going to be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, um, anyway, that was, I was thinking about that today, so I wanted to share that with, uh, about what Tabitha was saying, because that was really good. That was a powerful scripture to meditate on. And that's what I really took of it, about, away with it, is that, that we need to keep remembering, bringing it to remembrance, speaking it out. You've got to talk. You know, we're really good at talking. If it's complaining or talking about someone sometimes or woe is me, you know, um, we don't want to ever be, all that God's done for us, we don't ever want to be complainers. Do not grumble or complain. They got people killed in the Old yeah. Testament. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Grumbling right. and complaining. It's not right. Right? Not good. I got a scripture for that first one that I found in Isaiah 31, yeah. 1. Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help. They rely on horses and trust in chariots because they are mighty and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they do not look to the Holy One, Israel, That's good. or seek the Lord. That's good. Amen. Wow. Praise the Lord. That's a good one. Isaiah, Isaiah 31 1. 31 1. Good one. Praise God. Good stuff. The Word's got so much good stuff. Let's look at, you know, um, John's been teaching on a. Uh, What's John been teaching on? Fruit. <laughs> fruit. Yeah. fruit. And pruning. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? It's so cool when you think about it. Like we were talking on Monday that, you know, we were talking and we read the scripture of, um, you know, put on. Put on Jesus, right? That's what we were talking about on Monday because it's the same thing as adding to your faith. Mm -hmm. Put on, you know, all the attributes of Jesus. And um, and then John 8, it's talking about abiding, you know, John 8, 31, Amplified says, So Jesus said to those Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in me and my word, if you abide in my word, hold fast to my teachings and live in accordance with them, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Amen. Amen. So, We've been learning, uh, talking about abiding, abiding, and being in, plugged in. We're, we're part of that branch and of the vine, and we're plugged into the vine. Therefore, our branch has a lot of leaves on it because it's got life flowing through it, and then it's got lots of fruit on it because life is flowing through. Branches bear fruit. That's what they do. The vines don't have the fruit. The branches do. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need to stay plugged in and abide in his word so if we truly hold fast to his teachings and believe and then the scripture second corinthians 9 8 you know do we truly um 
do we know the superabundance that we have in Christ? And do we truly believe it? And are we applying it? Are we going for it in our lives? Are we believing for it? 2 Corinthians 9.8. I'll read this, the New King James and then the Passion. And God is able to make, oh, I love this scripture. It's always been one of my favorites. God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Does that disclude anything? Nope. Yeah. It says abundance. Abundance in every good every work. Yeah. And it's all, all, always, all sufficiency, all abundance. It's just amazing. And um, the passion says, yes, God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace so that you will have more than enough of everything, every moment and in every way. He'll make you overflow with abundance in every good thing. Praise God. That is so powerful. Amen. You know, it says to write the vision and make it plain. So what are you believing God for? In this scripture, you know, you... There's a lot of things that we need. God wants us to have our wants because your needs will be all met when you have a higher vision, amen, mm -hmm. than just your needs. It's about others' needs. It's about sowing and, and harvesting, you know, and seed time and harvest will always be here as long as the earth is here, right? So it said, he said to Noah, so... Write your vision, write down your petition, write down what you're believing for. And it says there's there's really no limits right there when you read that scripture. Right. Now, are you believing for healing? It's already been given to you. So when the symptoms come, I mean, I know, you know, we're fighting, you're fighting some symptoms, John, and getting the, you're overcoming, right? Yeah. Amen. But it's, it's it's got to be that fight. It's the fight of faith because yeah. the lies and the enemy will always try to come in and say, you're not going to make it, right? Or you're not this or that. We have to fight that fight. But you've got to write it down and believe it and speak it forth. Your perfect healing or your provision or sale of your business, amen, for the price that you're believing for. What is it you're believing for? And make it bigger and higher. And God's going to say more than you can ask or imagine, more than you ask or imagine, not just a perfectly working, I mean, a, an amazingly working kidney, brand new kidneys for you. Amen? Yeah. Brand new. Mm -hmm. I mean, new kidneys, not just repaired or patched up ones, right? Mm -hmm. What are you believing for? Make it bigger and believe for, because God is able for us to take the land. God is, God is able, we are well able to take it. And that's what it says right here. We are well able. God is able. To make all grace, he's already done it with Jesus, abound toward me, toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things. So we have all our needs met, all sufficiency. We have our bills paid. We have our cars paid off, our homes paid off. Are you believing for that? Yeah. Debt free, believe for that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All sufficiency in all things. He says you having all sufficiency. He doesn't say ask for it. We already have all sufficiency in all things that you'll have an abundance for every good work. Amen. Don't you want to be able to give to every everything you can, every ministry that you feel is taking the gospel over the world yes. and give to them all and give hundreds and thousands and whatever. Wouldn't you love to be able to go all over or send someone or if you want to go, go all over the world yeah. and laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover and put up tents and have revival meetings? I mean, why not? Does anybody want to do that? <laughs> you guys see? Yeah. Whoa, wow, praise God. Well, you know what? If he did it for Schombach because of his vision, if he did it for the Copelands because of their vision, if he does it all over the world, who was the one that was Africa? Bonky. Reinhard Bonke, huh? Yeah. And then there's T.L. Osborne. Was that China he was believing for? I mean, if he did it for them, God's no respecter of persons. The same anointing is on you that's on them or in them. Same anointing. But we've got to believe higher and bigger. Amen? We're believing for church building of our own that we're buying yeah. and we'll have it paid cash. 
debt free. Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. Believe it for really an awesome property if need be. Well, we'll build. Can we believe for that? Yes. Amen. Yes. Let's write it down. Put down a prayer. I put down an amount. And God's, God's bringing it because we have to see bigger than what we do. We have this just meet my little needs and I'll be fine, God. No, we have to meet abundance for so many other needs and wants and to get people saved. You know, I was listening to some of you probably heard the message by Bill Winston when he said, Jesus is the door, right? He is the gate and, and here's the pasture, right? And that when they see what's in the pasture, they want to go through the gate to the pasture, right? Well, your life should be showing what's in the pasture. Your life should have such abundance and blessings and anointing and joy and love and peace. And they're like, how do I get some of that good pasture grass stuff? How do I get that? Well, this is the door. Jesus is the door. He's the gate. He's the way. They want to go to the pasture when they see your life. We're the living epistles. Amen. Yeah. The word that you put in your heart has to have place and room and grow and become. And the kingdom advances. And then you show the pasture. Because he says, we'll go in and out and find pasture. Amen. Mm -hmm. Beside quiet waters. So when, when they, you show in the pasture because of your life, they're going to want to go through the gate. <laughs> They wanted Jesus because look what he's, he did. He was healing them. He was giving them life and hope. And when so many left him and, and he said to the apostles, are you going to leave me? She goes, wherever we go, you have the words of life. We know that. Yeah. We know that. Amen. But so many people don't know where the words of life are. And we can give it to them. But we've got to show them. Amen. It's not just. And we've got to be so loving and non-judgmental. Yeah. Right? We've yeah. got to watch our mouths right. and love people and speak blessings on them. And that's how they're going to turn around, not by us judging them in our mm -hmm. thoughts mm -hmm. or in our mouths or in our attitudes. We've got to love people. Mm -hmm. And that's how yeah. we portray. We as Christians are showing the will of God in our lives to others, just like Jesus when he walked, he said, this is the Father's will. And he's healing. He's setting them free. He's casting out demons. That's what we should be doing and showing who God is by our lives. Amen? Amen. 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 Yeah. All right. Praise God. That will end there. Anybody have anything they want to add or share or something the Lord showed them? I know. Yeah, I do. I was thinking about that scripture today. Um, Jesus says, if they receive you, they'll receive me. And if they receive me, they'll receive the Father who sent me. Amen. And so I was really thinking about that today and said, um, you know, I'm a Christian. A lot of people know it and do this whole town and everything. Mm -hmm. And this is who I am. This is what I do. And if I there's a little conflict or anything, there's those three seats. One is obedience. And the other one is um, conflict. And the other one is rebellious. So out of those three, you're going to be one of those. And once you're committed or compromised or rebellious, that's what it all is. That's what it comes down to. Huh, that's so, good. You know, you, when you live, you know, pick up your cross daily and walk with them and live this life. Committed. It's a great life. And, you know, it's not easy, but... You know, with the Lord's help every day, we just go. Amen. We plug along. That's good. And you know, I look at people in the world and I say, that's not easy. Mm. You know, I say, it's, uh, isn't it wonderful we have a Savior that we can trust and rely right. on, that we know God? Yeah. I wouldn't, I don't know how people live in this dangerous, scary world when you don't know the Lord. You know? Yeah. And so... The more I've walked with the Lord, the easier it has become. Mm -hmm. I know there's always the challenges and you have to fight that fight of faith right. and you've got to resist and all those things. But so much better having the hope and knowing knowing our God and knowing his promises that we can stand on and stand on and stand on and, 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 and never and quit. It, you know? Amen. Yeah. That's right. It's good, Chris. Amen. Anybody else?
He says, I want to go home and go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's worth sharing. Okay, good. It's a chance to brag about God. All right. Uh, I don't, most of you might not know, I was previously married, and uh, I got a call from my boys because their mother was rushed to the hospital. Now, she's 62 years old, and she was acting kind of funny, and so it turns out she has a brain ruptured aneurysm. Oh, dear. So, you know, I immediately checked in with God and just made a quick connection. He said, John, I got this. I said, I know you do. Thank you. So I got to, oof. Speak that to my boys. And I also got to speak it to my ex-wife. Praise the Lord. I got to say, Joanne, you're a miracle. God's blessing you. You just watch and see what happens. Now, a ruptured brain aneurysm, 50% don't make it to the hospital. Right. 50% don't make it home from the hospital. She's going home tomorrow. Praise She's the Lord. Tomorrow. There's no impairments. Right. Praise the Lord. That is a miracle. That's, that's God. Saying, I got this. Yeah. Yeah. And us both. And, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh. and so, you know, God is, I, I just, I don't love those opportunities, but I love the opportunities where God gets to shine even more. Yeah. And he does. Amen. It's so God. wonderful. He's amazing. Yeah. That is so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, John. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Well, you know, that's the hope for people that yeah. there's no hope yeah. in the world for stuff like that. Yeah. There's no hope. They don't have a savior. Yeah. But they do now. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Amen. amen. I mean other people, you know, they have these things going, they have nowhere to turn. But because of Jesus. Yeah, right. You know? Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Amen. Thank you, God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right, thank you, Lord, so much for this time, for blessing each and every one. Thank you for the healing and the provision and the protection. Lord, for the big dreams and big plans from our big God. That you're going to give us visions and dreams. Even at, at night, our heart will instruct us, you say in your word. And we thank you for it. And thank you for healing Joanne. Amen. Praise thank you for you, Lord. that, Lord, for that miracle and that testimony to Amen. To Brett and Ryan, Lord, thank you, and Joanne. Thank you for that, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, is an awesome God. Praise God. I'm excited about our meeting. I am too. Good job.